Dear students, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be, and whatever time you may be watching this lecture. Welcome to our lecture series on foundations in nursing. And today we are going to look at professional ethics in nursing. Before we pray, before we have our lesson, let us have prayer. Father in heaven, I pray that my students will be given knowledge, wisdom, and understanding and that they will use the knowledge they get from this lecture for the glory of your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so today we are looking at ethics and whenever we talk about ethics, what we actually mean is what is right or what is wrong to be done. So what should nurses do and what should they not do? That's what we mean by professional ethics in nursing. Mm. Uh, the, def the definition here is clear. Ethics are the values or moral principles governing relationships between the nurse and the patient, the patient's family and other members of health professions. We can also say ethics are the principles of correct professional conduct in regard to the rights of the patient, nurses, and fellow workers. So uh, there are principles that govern your behavior as a nurse when you interact with your fellow workers, your client. Your client can be the, the individual the patient in the hospital. Your client can be the, a family and your client can also be a community. So uh, I, I want to say that ethical principles are absolutely essential. And it's important that every nurse is responsible for maintaining this tradition. Failure to uphold nursing ethical principles disgraces the profession and implies disqualification by the relevant authority. So if you uh, carry out what we call malpractice, or if you violate some of these ethical principles, your license may get terminated and you may never practice again as a nurse. So uh, this we have seen. So we want to see each of these uh, principles one by one. And the first is respect for persons. Okay, we can also call it sanctity or sacredness of life. Okay. So uh, it means that nurses have to respect all persons. Uh, it means that nurses must support client goals for meaningful life and it also means that nurses must care for must must give care for the dying with respect so that means that we have to dignify people we have to give them respect when they speak we must listen when our patients uh, tell us their aspirations their goals in the hospital uh, for instance, uh, the goals, the therapeutic goals uh, in the process of healing. Uh, for example, uh, how long they want to stay in the hospital, what medications they would love to receive and what they wouldn't want to be injected in their body. We must respect that. And again, we must respect those who are dying. Don't look at your patient who is dying and then you abandon them okay uh, or you you start speaking in a funny way about how they look that is not professionalism and that violates this this principle of respect for persons so the other uh, principle that we want to talk about today is autonomy okay this includes uh, respect of liberty of action independence when we talk about autonomy we mean independence self-reliance provision of, of objective 
information. So independence will include all these things. Okay, it can actually autonomy can synonymous be used with the term autonomy. Autonomy and independence they mean the same thing. So uh, what do you do as a nurse? To uphold this principle, you support clients' right to information. Give them information when they ask you as a nurse something. Explain. Explain procedures before doing them. Uh, explain therapeutic regimen, their side effects, their indications. Respect the choice of the patient. Okay. When the patient chooses one uh, regimen, for instance, one procedure over the other, that choice should be respected. The nurse is morally justified to respect liberty in the case of life-threatening physical harm. E.g. patient trying to commit suicide, self-mutilation, self-destructive behavior, acts committed out of ignorance. Yes, so yes, we must uh, leave our patients to be independent in their actions, except when they are actually imposing threat to their own life or the lives, the lives of others, then that's when we can intervene. There we are morally justified. We say the nurse was right to intervene. Otherwise, if not that, then you have to give the patient their independence, their right to decide what to do. Okay. Then we have what we call protection of diminished autonomy. In this, we support the patient's right to inform the consent by telling the truth. Okay, in diminished autonomy, this is when the patient is a child, for instance. Uh, there is diminished autonomy when the patient is very, very sick, when the patient is mentally incapacitated. In all these situations, we say the patient has diminished autonomy because they are not at their full capability. Uh, both physical, it may be physical, it may be mental capability. Okay, so uh, we also provide information on treatment procedures and purpose. Then explain the system of how confidentiality of information will be maintained and interpret when necessary to patient and give them time to consider the information to be able to make rational decisions. Then duty not to harm. Uh, so here we prevent deliberate harm or remove harm that occur during performance of nursing action. So the duty not to do harm is actually what we call non-maleficence uh, so that 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 principle, known as non-maleficence, you can read about it. It's the duty not to do harm. As health professionals, we have that duty towards our patients that you cannot harm the patient, you cannot give poison to the patient, you cannot do anything that threatens the life of the patient. Then we have what we call beneficence, uh, whereby this in, in this, uh, it is considered as doing or active promotion of good. Doing good is what we call beneficence. So in this, we provide health benefits to clients and need to balance benefits and harmful outcomes. Then we have called what we call justice, which is fairness or equity. So make sure you uh, there is fair allocation of resources such as nursing care to any clients, especially the vulnerable. Yes, like when two patients come in the hospital, one of them is your friend, uh, but the other is very sick, do what is necessary, give justice, not, do not treat your friend well and leave the very sick patient. Attend. Uh, for instance, don't attend to your friend while, while you, you should actually have attended to the very sick patient. That's what we call fairness or equity. Okay, then we have conflicting issues, conflict with duties, rights, and interests of the society. 
Okay, patient has a right to make the decision of their quality of life. Uh, if their quality of life is not good, the patient, that patient has a right to make decisions. However, it is professionally unethical and illegal to participate in acts of euthanasia even when a patient demands it. Okay, so do not assist the patient to die, which we call euthanasia. When they are in too much pain, when they feel their illness is a terminal one, and they feel they are not going to make it in life, please do not assist them to die. That's what we call euthanasia. Then we have what we call community rights, outweigh individual rights. So if the patient has an illness that is a threat to the community and they want to go back to their family, please, that patient should be restricted because community rights outweigh individual rights. Then communicable diseases, community health outweighs individual rights. That's what I've talked about. Then we have the other principle known as confidentiality. Uh, the nurse must respect clients or patients' privacy in accordance with the moral rule of confidentiality. Privacy is a basic human right. So with confidentiality protects patients' information. Do not expose patients' information, diagnosis, and all particulars to the public except to prof health professionals who are who have the, the 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 right to access that information okay i remember this time when uh, uh, you know patients are there on opd and then you come out as a nurse with a patient's file and then you read uh, who is uh, so and so who is suffering from hiv where are you and so all patients have to see who who, who is that person who is standing up that is suffering from HIV? When you are in the hospital, do not take pictures because in doing so, you are breaching this principle of confidentiality. Okay, so there is what we call code of conduct for health workers. And code of conduct is a set of ethical principles that are generally accepted by the members of the profession. This pro these principles indicate factors that nurses must consider when deciding on proper conduct. So this is this code of conduct also shows how to behave with patients, our conduct, our behavior with patients. So this includes actually uh, the, the following. Now, these are responsibilities to patient or client. One is that a, a health worker shall, shall hold health, safety, an interest of the patient or client to be first consideration and shall render due respect to each patient in all circumstances. Okay? So make sure the patient is safe. Then a health worker shall ensure that no action or omission, no action or omission on his or her part or within his or her sphere of responsibility is detrimental to the interest, condition, or safety of a patient. So whatever action you carry out, whatever inaction you carry out, make sure that it's not detrimental to the interest or condition or safety of the patient. Then a healthcare worker shall provide the patient or client with relevant, clear, and accurate information about his or her health on which to base consent and the management for his or her condition. So provide enough information to enable the patient to make good decision regarding their health. A treatment and other forms of medical intervention to a patient who has the capacity to consent shall be, undertake, shall be undertaken uh, uh, without the patient's full capacity to consent free and informed consent except in emergency. So do not just carry out treatments without the patient consenting or agreeing. Then a health worker shall respect the confidentiality of information relating to a patient. So confidentiality, we have talked about it. Make sure everything, every information of your patient remains confidential. Do not tell anyone about patients' particulars except health workers that are directly concerned with the patient's care. 
Okay, for this is part one, we shall stop here and then we shall we are going to continue with part two. Thank you very much for your attention.